do it. Just do it. It's morning. You do. Morning, no. Oh, yeah. so sorry, Good morning, oh, so sorry, everyone. <laughs> Happy Monday. So That's right. Happy Monday. Just go ahead and sneeze. I know, Sleepy, you had you had a lot of things going on up there. <laughs> I hope I, it's not COVID. I hope it's not the COVID, you know? Oh, I hope it's not cocaine. Left oh. up in my nose, <laughs> making me want to oh, sneeze. Lordy. I tell you, I got a sneeze hanging on here, and it's been there for three days. <laughs> well, wow. if there's one thing that's worth catching the COVID, it's that sweet, sweet booger sugar. Am I right? Morning, Norm. <laughs> Okay, I don't know about that booger sugar. I do not drink my boogers, and then <laughs> I wouldn't know if it's sweet or not. But that's that's you. Go ahead and do it. Do you? You do you? <laughs> hey man, you gotta get the got to get the cocaine. I mean, the bottom how? I mean, that's all I'm saying. That's right. That's uh, what they call you always. the finger guns. That finger guns getting up there, right there, shooting it all the way down. Shooting it, shooting it. First the cocaine, then the nasal spray. Got to keep those passages clear. For more cocaine, for chow, for chow. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's it's good to be alive and uh, high as a kite. Yeah, with you as last always. Last day, I am. last day of November. <laughs> Slap your face. Last day. You got Is one month really? left in 2020. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's I know. The last That's day of luck. November. Lord, where did the time go? It's no one, no one knows. Every every day feels like six weeks, and every six weeks feels like three hours. It's, it's a wild time to be alive, That's especially right. when you're on cocaine, <laughs> and especially where you can't, when you can't go nowhere. Yeah, you can't get it. You, you stay at home. I just got that Amber Alert. You better, you better stay home, or we're gonna lock you up, tie you up, and yeah. strip you down naked. I say, I'm gonna go outside. <laughs> Lockdown, be, lockdown two, be the revenge of the son of lockdown. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. It's cold outside. What would you? <laughs> don't go outside naked. You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. We should move on. Don't do to, it. We have, we have wonderful news for you this morning. I hope you guys are all settled in and getting getting settled for your week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for your your busy busy week. <laughs> So true, so true. Uh, I hope you guys are uh, ready for it. Uh, of course, you know I am Alabaster Finger Guns, Pachow Pachow. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this last day of November. I am uh, busting out the big old thick sock now because it is, it is that cold. It's not a good time to be caught outside naked. I know that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, hope, uh, that is for sure. Uh, but uh, well, as you guys may one, have uh, heard, stay safe. yeah, yeah, uh, as you guys may have heard, Iran's top nuclear scientist, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, was assassinated on Friday, causing Iranian leaders to call for retaliation against Israel, which they assume was behind the attack. Iran also threatened retaliation against the U.S often viewed as Israel's closest ally in the region, but they vowed to hold off until January when we have a competent leader to assassinate. So. What? It's mm -hmm. wild, it's wild. You know what, I, I think this uh, this is a moment in time, you know, not, obviously, you know, uh, other nations should, you know, step up with some support and aid, but I think this is a time for Iran to... Uh, you know, step up and vow to kick some ass. <laughs> Nick Cage style, you know, Liam Neeson style, or hey, Monique style, if you like Precious that much, you know. <laughs> you know, oh, I, did. Uh, yeah. I, I liked Precious, and she kicked a whole lot of ass. You know, obviously, it was an abusive uh, parent relationship, but uh, <laughs> it, was, mm -hmm. it was an Oscar-worthy performance for sure. <laughs> And, I, mm -hmm. and I'm just glad, you know, at least one country, you know, is at least taken, uh, besides Denmark, is all about preserving knowledge, you know? Nuclear yeah. scientists, you can't mm -hmm. go killing, killing scientists. Right, mm -hmm. I know. Oh, my God. I mean, this, this is scary, y'all. I mean, if you really, really think about it, it's like a movie. We are living in a movie right now. And no one seems mm -hmm. to think that it's going to get worse. And I'm just, just because we got Biden in office doesn't mean things are going to get better 
I think things are just going to seem a lot slower. And and my my dog just fell over. <laughs> but uh, look 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 now, things are going to get worse. It is inevitable. It is, and and we're we're. I I just I don't even. I mean, I, let's just look at the Bible for instance. <laughs> revelations the world is gonna go up in flames so mm -hmm. hopefully you get all your shit together <laughs> and because we are headed down a crazy path they're killing the nuclear scientists just like they killed those what? other scientists who were who were almost about to solve the covid thank god we got yeah. some something in there that is true yeah is we're true. we're uh Starts turning to the Bible over there. I'm turning to a different, different fictional author. I'm turning to Stephen King because uh, I don't want to Iran here, but they're giving me some real carry vibes. Okay, I mean Israel and America, they feel like the popular kids in high school that are just trying to shit on Iran, and and Iran reaches out to the teachers and principal for help, but they keep getting blamed for the pranks that Iran and Amer or that Israel and America are pulling. And I feel like this is the bucket of pig's blood moment. And we're about to see if Iran has some scary psychic power. Just watch out. <laughs> I, I, I once met a, a 19 year old Iran. <laughs> Iranian, Iranian, Iranian man. <laughs> young man. Mm -hmm. I ran, I ran up to his uh, pizza counter. Mm -hmm. Young, young man, and he wanted to date me. He wanted to be all over this. He wants, he wants some of this, y'all. Those Irans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what a, was, uh, a good look what a name. random opportunity to flex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was time. Out there. I do know some yeah. Iranians. It was mm. time to, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, become a Iranian princess. Ah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think I would like that. Oh, of course. Mm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> speaking uh, speaking of people who uh, uh, get a leg up, um, head of the uh, inauguration committee. Uh, Roy Blunt has joined a chorus of Republicans urging President Trump to attend President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration, noting that Trump could continue to be more influential in the Re Republican Party if he maintains his dignity. <laughs> but Oops. these are the options 2020 has left, left us with. <laughs> An unpeaceful transition of power or a more influential Trump. <laughs> it's, it's a real dumpster buffet. <laughs> Oh, true. True, true. I mean, uh, I, I think I know why they call him Roy Blunt, you know. I mean, this guy's clearly been smoking the peace pipe, uh, and uh, he wants to get Trump on that Bob Marley trip real quick, you know what I'm saying? And I love it. I love it. I'm all for it. I mean, give me a Roy Blunt any day over a narc-ass Jeff Sessions. That's what I'm saying. More than norm to that. <laughs> I mean, I just can't imagine. I, I mean, I can. I can just imagine if Trump went, he'd probably punch Biden in the face. He just, he, he just cannot handle the blow to his ego in plain daylight. I know it. I know it is true. He's going to melt all that orange. is going to drip down his face just like Giuliani. Let's see what happens. I'm excited about it. It's uh, the Republican Party it itself is melting. <laughs> it's it's hilarious. You know, I uh, mm. I know Trump doesn't drink, but uh, perhaps showing up drunk at the inauguration might be uh, one last dunk that uh, he might be able to slip past. <laughs> you know, old sleepy Biden. <laughs> It'd be wild. It'd be wild. Sleepy Joe, <laughs> sleepy McLean. <laughs> That's right. Well, speaking of no. things that disappeared, like. <laughs> Uh, that last crazy president, uh, at, as mysteriously as it appeared, Utah's unexplained metal monolith, which we sh talked to you about uh, the last show, vanished on Friday. According to the Bureau of Land Management that discovered the large object, there still seems to be no possible explanation for how it got there and why it vanished. In unrelated news, 
Tim Cook tweeted Saturday, got my futuristic still outhouse back. <laughs> yeah. Taking some private poopy. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, uh, if I had to guess what happened, I think somebody probably tried to shake it like a vending machine, you know, and then it just, they probably got crushed like, uh, like by a vending machine. At any rate, I'm sure that the uh, parent company knows where to cart this off, uh, you know, and this is probably just the biggest marketing failure since Crystal Pepsi. So, you know, laugh it off. <laughs> well, uh, uh, to that I say, uh, good riddance. You know, I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm all for uh, art installations, but uh, I'm afraid that uh, I'm a you know, I, I'm afraid of aliens. Okay, I've I've got way too many secrets <laughs> up in this head. You know, and I, uh, one uh, one alien gives me uh, any sort of uh, any form of waterboarding, I'll crack. <laughs> I'll crack under pressure, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right, you guys. I just I just think this is crazy, y'all. I mean, this is crazy. We don't know how it got there, and then it just suddenly disappeared. Oh my God. You y'all, we really should be freaking out right now. I mean, <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm like, what the hell is this? And nobody's nobody's freaking out about it. Nobody's wondering. It's not. No one's talking about it. Nobody wants to know what's going on. What the fuck, Perhaps man? I should. This I should is be crazy out. shit. Yeah. Perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Should probably be freaking out. You know. Maybe. I think we should be freaking out right now, but. We don't know exactly what happened. So take take some psychedelics while you're in quarantine and you'll you'll freak out, especially if you're alone. <laughs> it's <laughs> not a good set, not a good year. mindset. That's right. Mm -hmm. I've been looking uh, Yeah. You know, I've been I've been looking to the sky for answers why. You know, and I've also been looking for <laughs> Well, I just I've you know, I've been looking I look to a book for answers, I look to the sky for answers, and it seems like the only real truth I'll be able to find in this world is, uh, <laughs> is at the bottom of my sink, huffing paint. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. I, I, I just I just got received a little a little track the other day from a, a man who was helping me move a piece of furniture and he said it on it it said, Are you a good person? And he told me all about God. So maybe I should send that track to you. <laughs> it mm. might help you figure out the bottom of your sink. <laughs> well, uh, good luck with that, <laughs> sleepy. Uh, God is dead. Moving on. Fred Eshelman <laughs> has sued to recoup $2.5 that he donated to True the Vote, an organization set up to challenge the results of the 2020 election on behalf of President Trump. According to Eshelman, the organization withdrew lawsuits in several key states and thus did not satisfy the conditions of his donation. True the Vote has described his claims as not true, noting that they offered to repay him in Trump stakes and or authentic pieces of the crumbling border wall. <laughs> A souvenir. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. boy. Well, I'll tell you, this is, uh, this is, you know, this hits right in the caboose for Trump, you know. <laughs> It's uh, let's all hope that uh, all the red hat factories don't sue for defamation here. <laughs> Goodness, right? I, I mean, who are these people with uh, money that still take Trump seriously, right? Like we have the receipts, the bankruptcies, the frauds, the stiff subcontractors. I mean, anyone who has that much money to throw away on Trump getting elected is either an idiot or a lobbyist. Right. I'm with you, Agagaster. I'm with you. I mean, what idiot mm -hmm. out there still thinks that it's going to turn around? <laughs> I mean, if you donated $2.5 million to an idiot, you better be prepared to know that it's going to go right down the down to the bottom of, of Sleepy's sink. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, Ivanka <laughs> spent it on all of her bags, and Donald Jr. spent it on his hair gel. So it's gone. Yeah. It's gone, buddy. A fool and your money soon go separate ways. That's what uh, that's what Kirk's saying there. True. <laughs> that's, that's right. These guys are fools. Fools for donating so much. <laughs> it's, it's a yeah. lot of money. 
that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, so Lord. much money. That's like two Ferraris. That's a lot of money. Come on, <laughs> that's, Jesus. That's, that's a lot of pizza <laughs> for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. That's a lot of pizza. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm hungry right now. Ninja Turtle. For a ninja Turtle. That's, that's all they eat. That fuels their ninja powers. Here was an half <laughs> shell. We all know how it goes. Well, speaking of uh, special powers, <laughs> I uh, am surprised that uh, some of these people are back in the news. Uh, Mike Tyson uh, made his boxing comeback on Saturday, but the headlines and memes were dominated by the quick knockout a former NBA player, Nate Robinson, by YouTube celebrity Jake Paul in the second round. <laughs> the quick loss even took Robinson by surprise. <laughs> it was saying, it usually takes four playoff games for me to get knocked out. <laughs> oh, oh. Ouchie. Yeah. <laughs> that one hurts. I mean, as a Hoops Jake fan, Paul. I've always loved... The uh, the uber athletic Robinson and his high flying dunks, but <laughs> no, you're laying, man. I mean, please take your talent back to the Venezuelan development leagues where they can shine their brightest and net you several thousand bolivars per año. <laughs> Well, I am confused. I am all confused about this. Uh, because I thought it was a Mike Tyson fight, fight and I did see all of the, all these other guys. So who was Mike Tyson fighting, and, and what actually happened to that fight? It's, uh, is it, I don't know what happened in his actual fight. Uh, Nate Robinson and Jake Paul were fighting on the undercard. So usually right. in, a, in a fight, there's a card, so there's several fights. Well, I understand card. that. I was just wondering what his mm -hmm. what happened with Mike Tyson. Uh, That's all. Tyson I think he, Jones. I think he lost. I think it was a draw. Was it a draw? That's what I saw, but um, I didn't understand it. But people sorry. just care that Nate Robinson got knocked out. Honestly, that. Well, I uh, yes, where that, everyone is, that was the that. new story, right? Mm -hmm. My 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 George curiosity just wanted to know what happened to Mike Tyson. I wanted to see if he bit off another ear, but mm. that didn't happen. No, did he beat that shark that he was going to box? We talked about that. Remember? I what happened? What That's did right. happen with that? He, we yeah we talked all about that, and I was so excited to see what the outcome was. Right. I hope that it was just out. them. Dropping a live shark into a boxing ring and then watching it suffocate slowly, asphyxiate <laughs> on the oxygen, as Mike Tyson danced around it, punching the air. That was. I, I think he's just scared. I think he's making all these stories up, and then to get away from that story, he made this story, and to get away from his real fight, he put up these YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, he went up against uh, a fifty-one-year-old Jones. Uh, but I'm looking for, and I, I, I'm not seeing any of the outcome for that, uh, unless I, I got to dig. Anyone who follows fights is, is hating our coverage of this event right now. They are, <laughs> they are defecating their pants and like, marinating their own two men right and they don't it's like, oh, about it le leads to a draw. You are correct. It does lead to a draw. That's a very sexual thing, Ding, 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 ding. It does lead to a draw, correct. Well, you know, hey, I'm all for uh, the American dream of becoming famous on YouTube, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, with Jake Paul and, and, and Logan Paul, you know, what's up with these aggro alpha YouTubers getting yoked out, roided up, and beat up all in the public eye, you know? What's, what? <laughs> They're getting arrested, you know, <laughs> sometimes. It's crazy. It's Keep crazy. that shit private, man. Friends only. Don't don't share well, it with the called, whole followers. Well, it's called it's called more followers, and uh, any all news is good news. All news is is publicity, right? Speaking of publicity, mm -hmm. uh, I want to give a yeah. special shout out to the people that write for this show: Garrett Mendez, Jolene Kim, and Zach Hillman. And don't forget about April Garrett Lutshaw, Ray who is a writer for this show. Doing a great myself. job. Does a great job. I hear great yeah. things about all these comedians, all these wonderful people. Yeah. Including Jolene Kim. He's got a Patreon. 
That's right. You better get you people. better get on that Patreon. You better become a member or she's going to haunt you. She's going to hunt you down and haunt you in your own home. She can find you. She, 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 would she hunt me down and then kill herself in my home so she can haunt me? <laughs> That's right. She's going to hunt you down. You might actually that's, kill her, and then she's going to haunt That sounds you. truly haunting. I don't want to watch someone kill themselves <laughs> in my she, home. She, she, she's not going to kill herself. That would be if you killed her. Otherwise, she's just going to haunt you like an <laughs> ex-girlfriend crazy. haunts you. <laughs> oh, okay. This is not a not a metaphysical haunting, then. I, sorry, I take things a, a little literally. Unless you That's use nice. your finger guns and you go pa chow pa chow and she just goes on up to the sky mm. and then she will haunt. <laughs> the finger guns only blast out verbal bullets, okay? There's no real guns in my household. I got enough, <laughs> enough firepower with my brain over here, okay? I don't know. About that. Why don't you think about that one for a second? <laughs> oh, but anyways, get Very on her. Get on her. Yes. Patreon and Absolutely. help her pay her nineteen thousand six hundred and seventy-five dollars of rent. That oh my she gosh! Owes. She's I drowning. The number it keeps growing. Just, wow! Just drowning. I know the months keep going and the rent <laughs> keeps going higher, and it's the wild, jobs right? keep disappearing. Uh, but anyway, speaking of jobs disappearing, uh, if you have any more, if you have any spare change left after donating. Uh, any of your attention and or money to those uh, to those names mentioned beforehand. Don't forget about the Pack Theater. Wonderful place that uh, supports great live place. comedy. It is a small business uh, and uh, can keep uh, keep the comedy scene alive in, in, uh, <laughs> in Los Angeles. That's right. That's right. Now, now I just want to say one thing before we move on. Uh, Sleepy, I love your new uh, hair 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 dye job. You dyed your hair over your vacation. I'm you look sure twenty years I'm younger. Sure it's Sleepy. just temporary. It's, it's true. No, it's uh, it's a good eye. That's a good eye you've got there. I, I did uh, I did see my uh, my colorist, uh, Wendy, and she uh, well she, you know, she's a pro and uh, and uh, doesn't care about her health so. Oh Lord, well you look, she was in you there, look like she you're was 20 in there, years younger. Touching. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Mm. Well, looks good. well uh, yeah, looks good. Looks good. Uh, unfortunately, 46 year old Chinese American Tony Shea, entrepreneur and visionary known for being a pioneer in the shoe industry through Zappos. I don't know if you bought your shoes from Zappos, but um, he was also known. Uh, for his current project of trying to re- re- revitalize downtown Las Vegas, and he died after being injured in a fire. Oh. It's real unfortunate that That's those terrible. shoes weren't made by Asians because they really could have helped him escape that fire a lot sooner. Oh, <laughs> wow! Sad, sad story. It's very, very sad. Yeah, I mean. This is uh, really sad to me. I mean, it's wild to me that we still live in a world where house fires are an issue. I mean, I thought that, you know, one of the big breakthroughs of unchecked capitalist greed would eventually be better flame retardant materials. But I mean, I guess they can't sell you two houses if they don't burn the first one down. I mean, it's the iPhone all over again. Come on, people, wake up. <laughs> what? This is definitely sad news, you know. I uh, I often have fever dreams of dying in a uh, in a fire, you know. <laughs> but I do know that it is when it is my time to go, the fires will feel cool to the touch. <laughs> oh, well, what does it mean? Yes. What does no. it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? I don't know what that means, but it is sad. I say it's sad because we lost another brilliant genius Asian. An American Asian, an Asian who speaks English, an Asian who wasn't, who did not have a, a, a an accent, and he was well loved. But I guess that's what happens when Ivanka Trump considers you a friend. You never know what her real intentions are. You never know what she's doing with those shoes that she bought from you. <laughs> it's true. 
So be careful out there, Opportunist. Asians. <laughs> mm-hmm. Watch out for the Ivankas of the world. Yeah, no, no doubt in that advice. Well, you guys may have heard this one. Vanderbilt kicker Sarah Fuller made history on Saturday when she became the first female athlete to play in a Power 5 conference football game. Now, Fuller kicked off for the Commodores in the second half to make her debut and cement her name in history. Head coach Derek Mason did get fired after the game, but it was because of how poorly the male athletes played. That's progress. Wow. (laughs) It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild, you know. Well, hey, here's to a new era. I'm very excited here, you know. Not only do I wish equality on the field, but also off the field, you know. She better be getting mixed up in antics with some rappers or, uh, you know, I'd, I'd cohorting with some uh, young Disney starlet, okay? You know? <laughs> hey, she's, uh, she's, you know, official. She becomes officially, you know, a, a, a member of the league, you know, when, <laughs> when the judge lets her off with a DUI on a weekday. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you, Sleepy. I mean, I'm surprised that women aren't more routinely scheduled. I'm not sure how we deal with full contact, though. Might have to come back to me on that one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was thinking the same thing, Ella Gasters. I mean, I'm sure one day it'll happen, and we'll deal with it then. I mean, we we had we had female newscast news sports uh, female sportscasters, and everybody freaked out about that. And now we have this a kicker. But for now, I'm gonna say congratulations, Sarah Fullard, for getting out there on that field. Just getting out there mm-hmm. and using that that leg. I'm sure. I'm sure you had a lot of practice kicking those balls. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You gotta be ruthless. You gotta be ruthless out there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Rough and tumble. That's Will for sure. Uh, in uh, speaking of a of a cruel world, uh, David Prowse, best known for the as the actor inside the Darth Vader suit, has died at eighty five. While James Earl Jones comes to mind for playing the voice of Darth Vader, studio execs reminded us that David Prowse did the hard work on set every day and put in a lifetime re- responding, "No, I no, but I was the other guy, the one inside the suit." Yeah, this is a uh, this is another sad one. I mean, my family and I just rewatched Empire Strike Back on, Strikes Back on Saturday, and it's um you know it's like the universe was telling me to watch the only really good movie that this guy was ever in. Probably very sad. Right, right. Oh my gosh, this reminds me that I need to binge all the Star Wars. Everyone's saying that they're all good. I sh- I am looking forward to that. I really know nothing about Star Wars, but I have to say that I have been to Skywalker Ranch, and I stayed there. I was invited by George Lucas himself. That's Mm. right. I got to go into the theater, watch a movie, watch a Star Wars movie, go to their little store, buy some little trinkets. Yeah, that's right. I've been to Skywalker Ranch. I know George Lucas. Just putting out, putting that out there. That is awesome. That is another awesome. tangential flex. Yeah, this is good. good. For you. This wow. is good. This is very good. Well, uh, you know, yes, character actors have long needed their due in the spotlight, you know. Uh, but with the Oscars and every other award show uh, be- becoming politicized to death, <laughs> good luck getting uh, getting any more recognition. Uh, but um, I hope. Uh, I hope this at least makes the grand in memoriam uh, that uh, <laughs> Hollywood's planning next year, assuming wow. that any plans are still next year. <laughs> right, right. Assuming that any plans are still next year. Well, speaking of not having plans for next year, Romaine Grosjean, a Formula One driver, survived a violent car crash in the first lap of the Bahrain Grand Prix. Ooh. After clipping another racer, Grosjean's car crashed, splitting in two and catching fire. 
before he was able to leave the wreckage. He is still, he is currently still hospitalized for trauma, burns, and being hella fucking metal. That's right. <laughs> mm. That's pretty crazy. You know, that's, uh, it's got to be scary. You know, it's gotta, <laughs> walking away from a car crash is not what, uh, not what it seems like in the movies. You know, it's, it's much different in real life. You know, trust me, folks. <laughs> you know, like my, like me and my friend Bobby Kennedy, you don't, you don't want to be get di- dead under a bridge and in a car crash. <laughs> yeah, damn. I mean, I, I get mean, scared when I'm in the passenger seat. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. You're fine. Go right ahead, Kirk. I, I was just saying that I, I get real scared when I'm in the passenger seat and someone is driving faster than 75 miles an hour. <laughs> but I, I can do about 90. And then I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get a ticket or I don't want to get split in half or nothing. So that's about it for me. Yeah. About 95. I've never gone to 100, I don't think. Have you, Alabaster? Yeah, I, uh, I actually uh, hit about 112 one time on the way up to San Francisco. That was on uh, I was on the 101 in between uh, Santa Barbara. I think uh, I think Sleepy was on that road trip with me, but he might have been too out of his mind on Quaaludes to remember. Not to, oh, not to throw your reputation under the bus, Sleepy, but uh, <laughs> you'd have some wild times back in the 90s. Oh, lordy, lordy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, as for this guy, he knew the gig when he got behind the wheel. I mean, that's why they do it, man. They're courting danger, feeling the Grim Reaper's breath on the back of their neck. Your hands clench so tight on the wheel that you don't know if they're your own or the icy hands of fate. I mean, that's why I forage for mushrooms. Well, I like mushrooms. (laughs) I like to eat those mushrooms. Do you get the chanterella, chanterellies, or chanterellies, chan- chanterellas? I don't even know how to pronounce them. Chanterelli. I honestly, I don't know much about mushrooms. I just know that uh, some taste good in an omelet, some make me trip the fuck out, and some send me to the hospital. <laughs> That's living, baby. <laughs> Cheers, morning norm to that. Chow pa chow to having light plans in the future. Oh. <sighs> Well, Isn't nihilism great? Well, I'm feeling well. Uh, I'm feeling uh, uh, the need to uh, to to stream to, to yeah. See what's uh, I, I what's think... new? What's new on the streamability? <laughs> yeah, streaming the dream over here, and that's the only thing that's going to get you through lockdown part two, the sequel, Revenge of the Son of Lockdown. Right? I, I mean, it's all these streaming services. That's why we like to shine. A spotlight on one of our faves and let you know if we think it's a holly norm or a morning wood and today sleepy is going to take us through hbo's engrossing whodunit the undoing take it away sleepy uh will uh wanted to uh bring us all to the uh, wonderful uh world of nicole kidman uh and uh yeah and hugh grant um now basically what I see this as, HBO had big little eyes, and they were very pleased with themselves. And they, they gave themselves a, a big old fat bonus. And, 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 uh, and I, I'm sure, you know, Reese Witherspoon and Nicole Kidman and Shailene Woodley, I'm sure they all got their paydays, you know. But HBO execs, they really loved it. And I, and I bet you that one of those execs literally said, let's just do it again. Because that's, that's exactly the vibes I'm getting from The Undoing, you know. But uh, so we're getting, you know, we're getting solid, solid banger performances from Nicole Kidman. You know, does she look, uh, you know, ominous and ghostly in, uh, you know, 90% of her shots? You know it. You know it. You know, uh, does Hugh Grant, you know, bring back those pedophile vibes that we all miss from the early 2000s? You know it, you know. <laughs> It's, you know, it's uh, it's basically it's a lot of '90s nostalgia uh, wrapped into uh, a show, a show that's a, that's given you all all the all the uh, twists and turns of a, uh, you know, a, a, is is a man 
uh, really, is that man telling the truth? You know, and probably not. <laughs> you know? And it's uh, it's a mixture of uh, kind of a whodunit, but also just a very, um, well, uh, very telling, very telling of uh, uh, that that nobody is ever all good. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and give that a morning wood. <laughs> wow, a morning right on. wood. Nice. Well, I, I, I've i been watching that show as well. And and I have to say, I, I do think about Nicole Kidman every time I see her. And the, ne- the, next, the next episode I see her, I'm like, did she get Botox now? Because you can just see her as she's moving around and she doesn't want to move her face that much and the way she smiles she, she doesn't feel <laughs> anything you, she's Something just happened. making sure you don't see any of those wrinkles right and then the next the next episode it looks like she she got a an injection of botox or something because because hugh grant <laughs> looks even older next to her i mean <laughs> he's got all the wrinkles and everything and right next to her she's got nothing so it's really interesting to see these these real uh, entitled white cl- white upper class people with a lot of money see what they can get away with. But you know who is the most annoying to me is that little boy. I mean, I'm just like you are one of those little know it all little boys that I would like to just slap you in the face. Um, what? I'm sorry, what? ladies and gentlemen, but uh, that's crazy. Well, what? We don't we don't know what's happening, but uh, we're not gonna do any spoilers here now. But um, yeah, I, I think it's real interesting. I I do like that it keeps me on my toes, and it's it they wrote it real well so that you just stay with them and you know keep <laughs> keep your blood moving. Keep it your is blood. based off of a novel, so uh, I'm That's sure right. I'm sure this is one of those situations where the book is great. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's, mm. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. But I, I, you know, in comparison to some of the other shows I've watched, I'll give this a morning wood as well. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to break the streak here and uh, apologize to you guys. And I'll, I'll tell you why. It's, uh, it's British actors and uh, foreign actors playing American characters. Now, what's the criticism? Every time an American actor like Renee Zellweger or, you know, any, anyone else wants to play a British character, they always say that her accent doesn't sound real, doesn't sound authentic. And us Americans, we're used to interacting with people from all across this continent. We can't spot a real accent or a fake accent. Hell, we're too superficial and stupid to even know what's going on 75% of the time. And we just give we just give Hugh Grant and Nicole Kidman a pass, even though they're from opposite sides of the planet from each other. New York is halfway between them, and we just believe that, that they're both New Yorkers. And you know what? That's not fair that they get a pass. And no British actor should just get a pass based on their accent, with the exception of Bob Hoskins and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He is a miracle worker. And if you've never heard his actual voice and you've just seen Roger Rabbit, do yourself a favor and go dig up an interview because that man is is a magician. He is a miracle worker. And anything that falls short of that hardcore character uh, commitment that Bob Hoskins gave in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I- I'm sorry, I just I can't give it a morning wood. This is a Holly norm for me, guys. You know what? I'm changing mine. I'm changing my morning wood just because of what you said. I'm going. I'm going to go to Holly Norm. Yeah. Because you're right. I'm listening to a British accent and an Australian accent, and they're New Yorkers. So, <laughs> and even mm-hmm. the kid, even the kid, he has a little bit of a British, right? Some every now and then. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm changing I mean, mine. But chow, but chow to that. You know, f- fair is fair. I watched uh, The Haunting of Bly Manor and all the fake Scottish and English accents and that shit. Scottish. They were as hell. Oh, my goodness. They were so bad. Carla Gugino. Why does Carla Gugino get to do that? 
Why why did any of them get to do any of that? That was a horrible diarrhea bath of a show and no one should ever have to watch that. I hate awful. that show as well. I keep trying to watch it yeah. and I just can't stand it. Oh dear. Oh, the, the, dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! The the shitty attempts at poetry and shitty British accents. Oh my God! And you're not off the hook, Nicole Kidman. But it, your show's not as bad as that. That seeming pile <laughs> of fly bait. Big Little Lies was great, but it just. It's, hey, hey! If you had, that's true. But, uh, let's stick with some American actors, all right? Stop giving us a, stop stop giving us British Batman. Batman. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Plural. Batman. No no one counts Ben Affleck. Everyone forgets about those. That's God, That's I wish true. we had a British actor for those. <laughs> I could blame all our problems on. Uh, he should have just Spider-Man. used his Boston oh. accent as a Batman. Boston Batman accent. Oh. Mm. What's happening? What's happening oh, to you, sorry, Sleepy? Sorry, ah, I'm doing a wicked right hot battering over here. The producers are, are throwing throwing their action figures at me, <laughs> and I see it's uh, mostly Justice League characters. Yeah, okay. So, oh, oh, but <laughs> all, all all off oh, brand. Cyborg. Okay, well, apparently we we have to end the show uh, within thirty seconds, but we still have to solve. Fuck Mary, kill Nicole Kidman, Hugh Grant, or Donald Sutherland, uh, and go. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, well, well, I, I think the, uh, okay. the obvious Mary uh, We here. gotta marry yeah. Donald have to Sutherland. Donald. Grant. Oh, People want that Grant and that charming uh, smile, the stuttering. Wait, they they remember him from Sense and Sensibility and that. Let's not forget that, 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 that he did yeah. cheat on Elizabeth Hurley with Hooker. That's right. He is that guy. He's the one that you want to kill.